Hey everyone, I'm Derek. And I'm Andrew. And today we're going to talk about the Atlas charging system and how it's helping to overcome the issues with charging in the EV space for commercial and consumer usage. So let's dive in, start off with talking about the construction space. What are some of the challenges we have there and uh, what are we looking to solve? So in the construction space, one of the biggest issues is having to go outside of our normal routes to get to job sites, having to go out of that and then sitting at charging stations for hours on end, wasting our employees' time and the job site time. So either trying to build for that in the job or trying to make up for that time some other place with how long it takes to get to charging stations. Um, the other side of that is most of these guys take their vehicles home at night or are jumping from job to job, so they don't have time in their schedule to sit around and charge at home or sit at a charging station and really get the job done. That's kind of the biggest issue, especially the other side of thing is, other side of this is that outside of the charging infrastructure, if we have jobs that are way out, there's no structure. So if they have to go way out, they have to make sure that they have enough charge to get back and they really can't do anything during the day outside of that. What are some of the issues with fleet side of things? Uh, but one of the big ones is range. Uh, the infrastructure, the same thing. They're going usually around 200 miles a day on the local delivery routes. So you can imagine, like you can't have somebody stop in the middle of their day yeah. to charge up. And is there actually a place to do that? Like maybe here in the Phoenix metro area, you can find a charger. Imagine when we're going outside of that space to do deliveries, you can't have someone sitting there for two, three hours charging, because that's something that's a cost yep. associated with it that's not currently there today. Um, so that's, that's one of the big ones on the local delivery side. On the semi side, it's a very similar, right? You, it's all about getting the miles in. And t a lot of these drivers get paid by the miles. So you can imagine like if they're sitting there charging, they're not happy. Yep. They want to be able to be on the road, get those miles in. So they can't wait two, three hours to charge. And that's one of the challenges when you have a delivery truck or semi truck, you have these huge battery packs, like hundreds of kilowatt hour packs. So you, if you don't have a charger, they can charge it in say 15, 30 minutes. Like that's a lot of wasted time. It's a lot of wasted money. So that's one of the challenges we have in that space. Awesome. So what is Atlas doing to change these uh, issues that are currently involved in the commercial and consumer space? Yeah, so one thing is we're starting with the battery design. So we de developed a battery working with the chemistry that allows you to fast charge, um, which is really unique, right? So we're trying to charge that battery in less than 15 minutes. So one of the things we had to accomplish is how do we heat and cool that battery? And how do we make it so it's really efficient um, low resistance, so that's, that's one number one. So we're developing the battery packs around that and the thermal management systems that allow you to charge in 15 minutes. The second part of that is the charging stations. So the charging station is capable of 1.5 megawatt or, or sorry, megawatts. Um, and that's also split, so you can have multiple vehicles being charged at the same time. So we develop uh, the system, you know, whether it was battery backup in there or the grid connection to allow a, you know, consistent user like uh, experience, right? So that's yeah. one of the challenges right now, like in the space, whether it's, you know, regular work or it's, uh, you know, a consumer like you and myself. Uh, for example, like our colleague Victor is on a road trip right now and he had to, a trip that should have taken, you know, four or five hours to California, it took him 10 and a half hours, spent like over two hours at one of the charging stations. The other thing is the reliability, that things are down all the time. I decided to stop at a second site uh, and the biggest problem here as you can see is all the the ports here are broken um, the speed is very inconsistent it reduced down to 11 kilowatts we're at 97 percent we're gonna hit stop Ooh, it gets up you and i are at the same charging station yep. like we're splitting whatever that power capability is um, and then you don't really know if those chargers are up or not like you look at the app Mm -hmm. It tells you like how consistently they're down, yeah. but it doesn't tell you like is it online right now. So that's one of the other challenges. Okay. And what about vehicles? Is there a certain limit to what vehicles can do? What charging stations? And is Atlas going to have that same limitation? Yeah, great question. So like a Tesla charger right now is only capable of charging Tesla uh, vehicles. So you can't pull up with your you know Audi or something like that and yeah. charge it there. So that's one of the challenges is, uh, you know, we have a standard where every vehicle should be able to go and plug into like an SAE spec charger. Um, with the Atlas charger, we can charge anything. Like we're, we're vehicle agnostic. Uh, we're gonna communicate with the vehicle that tells us how much charge it's capable of because there's not any vehicle out right now that's capable of that 1.5 megawatt. Yeah. So that's, uh, you know, pretty unique to Atlas. But what, what's not unique is we can put it in any vehicle. Like we last week uh, charged, um, a Tesla on here, we charge an Audi, it doesn't matter. Yep. We, as long as it can communicate, we can charge it, so. Perfect. Stay tuned for updates on the Atlas charging station and how we're gonna solve those infrastructure problems related to charging and electrifying the commercial space.